How's it going guys? It's been a while and uh, I'm finally starting to do uh, the repair video on this 3000 watt 48 volt uh, reliable electric converter that was sent to me by Chris from YouTube. Um, what happened with this inverter uh, is he had an electrician uh, wire this into his generator panel and he used uh, the neutral slash ground uh, same thing on this uh, unit um, it doesn't really have a neutral it's actually just ground and so he hooked up the two lives and the neutral and the neutral is bound uh, to the one live or sorry bound to uh, ground on this inverter but what happens is is the ground is bound to your neutral in your in your uh, breaker panel and on this inverter from live to ground and live to ground you get half voltage so if you use the ground on this inverter it it's pretty much dead shorting your inverter so that's what happened to this one uh, all the let's just take this out I already uh, unscrewed it from the from the case itself and diodes and then we got uh, some more of the the input stage this output stage all the output stage fets are fried a uh, bunch of the input fets are fried um, I think I'm just gonna replace them all um, I contacted reliable uh, for 40 bucks they'll send you a repair kit for this and it comes with everything you need to fix this as long as it's not a transformer that's blown um, they give you this board they give you this board they give you all these little tiny little uh, resistors they're gonna be a big pain in the ass um, I've done them before I do not like these little resistors are such a pain to get off because they do go not all of them but when these go these go so this is gonna be a fairly lengthy long repair video I'll, I'm gonna uh, deliver this in parts because it's probably gonna take me a week uh, on and off. I'm not just gonna go at it straight for six hours. I'll probably do it an hour here, an hour there, but yes, it will take probably about six hours to repair this. Um, and we'll see if we can get a working unit out of this. So 40 bucks for the parts, six hours of manual labor, as long as you're good with the soldering iron and you understand how an inverter works and use the correct parts in the correct spots. We're gonna see if we can get a working inverter out of this. Just show you guys the bottom real quick. Everything looks not too shabby. You can see some, uh, actually no, that's just, that's probably just from the solder. But, uh, no burnt traces. So that's a good sign. Um, the only th little bit of damage there is, is uh, right there where the fuses go in. You probably won't be able to see that because it's focusing on these wires. Anyways, the fuse holder is totally destroyed. They gave me some new ones, so we're going to have at it. Anyways, I'm going to start working on pulling the MOSFETs off first, and then uh, replacing the MOSFETs, and then I'm going to work my way to the resistors, and do the resistors. Then I'm going to eventually, let's see if I can turn this off with one hand, I'm going to eventually make my way um, to these boards here. These boards are a pain because you gotta unsolder all these at the same time. I'll show you a little trick that I use to unsolder them. And uh, yeah, anyways, thanks for watching. And here is the repair kit that they send you. It send you all the MOSFETs, the two boards, uh, more fuse holders and your fuses. And they also send you a crap ton in these little bags with, so with, with the input MOSFETs, they send you all the input MOSFET resistors and with the output MOSFETs, or the, sorry, these are the inputs, these are the outputs. With the input MOSFETs, they send you the resistors with those. So, let's get started. Here we go. So we're gonna start by removing, I'm using the wrong screwdriver for the job. My other one, so I might have to go get the right one. These are tight, wow. They do a good job on making sure their screws are tight. That's good. I like to see that. So, there we go. 
nice and tight. The one thing I want to note, the guy that sent this to me, Chris, he got another one from them. And the second one, I don't believe he fried it uh, by bonding the ground and one of the lives. I believe that one he got was just a faulty unit. I'm not sure uh, why it was faulty. Uh, I know why this one burnt, and this was because of that problem I mentioned earlier. Um, but he's, he's having problems, and uh, so he's working it out with the company, and the company's kind of putting up a fight now because they don't want to send any more inverters. So we'll see what happens with him. But uh, yeah, that's the way that goes. So it's not a perfect company, obviously. That's too bad, but uh, just the way it is. Uh, let's see here, what else we got? Okay, we got these giant screws on the bottom, on the heat sink in. frame. We're going to work on these uh, MOSFETs first before we get too far. And that'll be the first part of this video. So just got to pop these MOSFETs off. Mm -hmm. They're on pretty good too. There we go. Get that one off. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now we remove this heat sink. Put that off to the side. And I'm going to pause you for a second because I'm going to get my multimeter and we're going to double check these MOSFETs. So this is so you guys can see in here. When I touch my two prongs together, it represents a dead short. So this is the input MOSFET, dead short. This one's not a dead short, it seems. I don't know about that, we'll see. That's a dead short. That one's not. I'm gonna replace them all because I don't trust one like this. It could be damaged. So that's what we're gonna start with. So we know that this one's shot, this one's shot, this one's probably shot, and this one is also probably shot. So we're gonna go ahead and unsaw those right now on camera. Just give me one second to set up. I got a protective tin barrier between uh, what I'm soldering and my batteries I'm soldering on top of. And we're going to go at this. Now these MOSFETs can get quite hot so I'm going to see if I can do it bare hand or if I'm going to have to go go with... Uh, I'm going to have to flip this over actually. Razor camera here. So I'm gonna melt this side of the solder and uh, try. So you gotta melt each lug. So there's three lugs you gotta melt and somehow rock this thing out. Unless you have, uh, yeah, I don't think the soldering iron is gonna quite do it. Doesn't put out enough heat. No. Yeah, see? You need a minimum 100 watt soldering iron for this. And this is not a 100 watt soldering iron. This is more for fine stuff. It can barely, like these big sections, like look at this. See how long it takes? It can't melt it. There's just too much cooling capacity in this much solder. It just, there's no way this little thing will melt it. So, that's going to be it for this video. i got to go get a better soldering iron. My 100, I have a 100 watt soldering iron, but the end is down to nothing. I can't even use it anymore, and I can't find ends for it anywhere, which is a big bummer. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. The next video should be a lot better.